different audience. All right, additional topics. Number one, integration by parts. OK, so it says, remember that the product rule states uh, that if f and g are differential functions, so if you can differentiate them, uh, then the derivative of f of x times g of x, so remember product rule, it just says take the derivative of the first, multiply by the second normal, plus keep the second one, or first one the same, derivative of the second. Okay. Plus someone was cheering for calculus. All right, therefore, if we integrate the right side, we have... So you'd integrate, you'd have f prime g of x plus, I'll break it into two pieces, f of x g prime of x dx. So rearranging, so you have all of this is equal to, well, you yeah, integrate, so it's f times g of x. All right, so rearranging, so you'd have your f of x times g of x from before, like if I integrated that first part, and then minus uh, the f prime of x g of x dx. So integrating f prime of x g of x dx. Okay. Okay, so you had, if you integrated this part here, it was all equal to... Um, this here. So if I integrate the derivative, it's just going to be f of x g of x um, equals, so you're going to subtract the, um, let's see, subtract this part over the first part. So the integrate, if you integrate f prime g of x, you're going to subtract it over, and then you have that left. Okay, so this is the formulation for integration by part, or the formula for integration by parts, but it's not usually this complicated. They usually just write it like this. So the antiderivative of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so you'll see what that, I mean by that. So basically when I look at this, what I'm integrating in number one, I need something to be u and I need something to be dv. u is going to be something where if you take the derivative of it, it vanishes. So by vanishes, I, means, I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean it's eventually going to go down to 1. Yeah, so see how if you take the derivative of x, it's going to be 1. All right, and then dv. dv is going to be what's left, the cosine x dx. The dx always goes to the dv part. Okay, so I always started out with by that. So say what u is and say what dv is. All right, du, when I take the derivative, it's just 1 dx. And then this one I'm going to integrate. So what do you get when you integrate? So it's kind of like you're doing you this in this sign. sense. Sign. Yeah, you get sine. Because you, when you take the derivative of sine, that's how you get cosine out. Okay, so I have that. <laughs> All right, so that means that this, this original... You got it? All right, so now when I set this up, this whole thing, so the x cosine x dx is equal to uv, so these two multiplied together, so x sine of x, minus this bottom row, so 1 sine x dx, and the integration sign, so sine x dx. Yeah, the derivative of v. Like it's the whole piece there. So it's the whole cosine x dx. Okay, so that came from the product rule. It doesn't really look like it, but that's where that came from. All right, so x sine of x, that was outside, so it's just the same. And then when I integrate sine, you get negative cosine, right? And then plus c. So I get x sine of x plus cosine of x plus C. So that's your answer. Okay, so not too bad, is it? It's just, you need to remember, I always like remembered, okay, I do the main diagonal, like UV, and then minus the bottom row. And I always set it up that way, U D V, and then I took the derivative of the first one, integrated the second. All right, next up. 
So like I said, this isn't, they say it's not on the AP test, but sometimes it's going to make integrating a lot easier if you know this rule. So that's why I choose to teach it. All right, so number one, if I have natural log of x and then dx, this is where it gets hard because it's not like, it's not like one of them is vanishing when you're taking the derivative. But I don't know how to integrate natural log of x, right? That's how you take the derivative. So that's going to be your u part. So when I take the derivative of it, it's 1 over x. So dv is going to be what's left, just the dx. <coughs> so sometimes you kind of have to play around with them. You have to think about what's going to be which one. Okay, so du, du is 1 over x, dx. And then when I integrate dv, so I get v equals, what do you get when you just integrate dx? x, because it was 1 dx, so it's x. All right, so that means my answer. So if I'm integrating this, I'm going to have uv. So x, natural log of x, do you want me to write the rule up there? uv minus v du. All right, so I have minus v is x, du is 1 over x dx. So I get x, natural log of x, minus the integral of 1 dx. Yep, that's just x. So I have x, natural log of x, plus x, plus c. Because uh, when you integrate 1, you just get x. Oh, thank you, you're right. So I usually got that. So now we know how to integrate natural log of x. It's that. All right, number three, use integration by parts twice to find x squared sine of x dx. All right, this will happen sometimes where you're going to have to use it once or twice, maybe three times. All right, so we're going to let u equal x squared. And dv is going to be sine x dx. Do you guys see why I made that selection? Because eventually x squared, what happens with x squared? Yeah, it's just going to go away. You can call it vanishing. All right, so du is 2x dx. V equals, when I integrate sine? Negative cosine. Negative cosine, good. Okay, so this whole thing is going to be equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So u times v is x squared times negative cosine x, so negative cosine of x, minus 2x times negative cosine of x, so you can make that plus now, so plus 2x cosine x dx. Okay, do you guys see you'll have to do it again? Uh, because I had a negative cosine x there, so it was negative and the negative, so then plus. Where's the negative? Uh, that was over here. So it was these two that you're multiplying together for the bottom one, or for the second one. Oh, these two. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we need to do it again because I have 2x cosine x. So usually when I have to do it a second time, I'll let these be u2 and dv2. So u2 is going to be 2x dv2 is going to be cosine of x dx. You don't really have to put the little twos if you don't want to. But I'm just saying we're doing it for the second group. So du2 is just going to be 2 dx. And v2, if I integrate cosine, I get sine. Okay, making sense? Okay, so I still have this negative x squared cosine of x. Then I'm going to have plus, this whole thing is going to be the integration by parts the second time. So I'm going to have u times v, so 2x sine of x, 
minus the bottom row multiplied together, so 2 sine of x dx. So it's negative x squared cosine of x, running out of room, plus 2x sine x. You can pull out the negative 2, you know. So this is just going to be negative 2 times the integral of sine. So if I integrate sine, I get negative cosine, right? So it's going to be uh, plus 2 times cosine of x plus c because it was negative negative sine or negative cosine, right? So that's your answer. Okay, got it?